I'm Avalon, and I welcome you to the very first installment of Always Avalon. This month is Epilepsy Awareness Month, and as someone with epilepsy, I know how important awareness is. Because epilepsy is not something that people talk about a lot, and there is still a lot that needs to be found. There is no cure for epilepsy. There is many different treatments. And if you're blessed, if you're lucky, they work. And if you're not lucky, then it's a constant struggle to find new treatments and find something that works for you. I have epilepsy, and I say have because epilepsy is a constant thing. It's something that if you're lucky, you will get it under control, but it is something that never completely goes away. It's always something that I'm going to have to have in the back of my mind for my own safety. But I've gotten to a point in my life where I'm not ashamed of that. I can say out loud that I have epilepsy and it's not, because it's not a secret and it's definitely not something to be ashamed about. And so as I tell you my story, if anything I want you to get out of this, if you're struggling with any kind of chronic condition, maybe not even epilepsy, anything, Just don't be ashamed of it because your fight is important and you should always have pride in yourself. You should always have pride in yourself and know that it's not about this little about what your struggles are. It's about how far you've come. And when I have hard days and there are still hard days, even Though I'm coming up on 60 years seizure free now and I thank God every day for that but there are still struggles every day whether it's with my medication, with side effects, with with things like depression and anxiety which came about through my journey with epilepsy. So dive right in. Um, I was diagnosed with epilepsy in in October of 2010 and I I was having partial complex seizures for some time before then. Partial complex seizures are prolonged absent absent seizures, which is basically staring spells. And they can be missed a lot, and that's why it took a long time for anyone to notice, because I would just have these moments where I would just kind of pause. I couldn't move. I couldn't speak. I couldn't interact with the outside world in any way. And it wasn't until they started becoming so frequent that it happened one time when I was having a conversation with my mom. And and immediately she was like, we need to see a doctor. There's something going on here. And I went and I saw my GP. And then I saw a neurologist who immediately put me on medication and diagnosed me with epilepsy. Which epilepsy is just, it's very umbrella condition. It basically means having two um, having two seizures at one time at one two seizures at one time and and I was put on medication which didn't work for me at first I was immediately hit by side effects but they weren't con- but the medication was not controlling my seizures and so my family made a judgment call I made a judgment call and I went off the seizure medication. And in January of 2011, I had, January 9, 2011, I had two tonic colonic seizures, which are probably the most recognizable. Full body, jerking, everything. And I, I was taken an ambulance to a hospital and was there for a little while and then went back on to medication. And I then stayed on that medication for four years. Four years, yes. Yes. Um, for four years. And side effects were, they were okay. I mean, there is a lot of side effects, especially with epilepsy medication. And I was on Keppra XR, which has the least of it, but they still were pretty pretty scary side effects for I was for I was a young girl who'd never taken medication before and to have to take that much medication was kind of a scary thought for me and it was a huge adjustment going to school and 
and all my teachers had to know, all my friends had to know because it was something we were still trying to figure out. We didn't know if there were going to be more seizures, if it was going to affect my daily life. And it was something that I was afraid of and I was ashamed of as well. I didn't want to get labeled as the sick girl, the seizure kid. And so I kept it to myself as much as I could. I didn't tell anyone. And when I had to tell people, I was very quiet and shy about it. And it was a necessity more than anything. And when it came down to it, I look looking back, my life wasn't changed that much. And it was little adjustments in order to, to save my life. Um, it's a weird thing to have to take medication at a sleepover. And it was something that took a long time for me to get used to. But I was still myself. I was still outgoing. I hung out with my friends. I still went to sleepovers. I still had parties. And I just my parents just had to have conversations with parents so that I could be able to take my pills. And they would just keep an extra eye on me and... But it was just a really hard thing because epilepsy is such a kind of crazy thing because there's no, for me, there was no pinpointing what the trigger was. And so it was no way to just like say like, oh, we just cut these things out or we make sure that you're not around these things because we don't know what it was. And so it's always kind of something that brings me anxiety because I don't know. Every day is uncertain, and that's why I thank God every day I have a good day because I've had some really bad ones, and I just like to be able to count the good days more than the bad days. When I was the the summer of that same year, I started going to Camp Blackhawk, which is out of the Epilepsy Foundation of Greater Chicago. It's a free camp for kids and teens with epilepsy. And that was a really amazing experience to be able to go to a place where everyone was like you. And I mean, but everyone's stories were different. It was really something to see like these seven and eight year olds who had had epilepsy since they were born. And then kids my age who have had it all their lives or on and off their whole lives, or kids who, like me, have maybe had only one or two seizures. And I made some really good friends who really helped me to understand what it meant to be an epileptic and know and have some kind of support system. And just because it's not something I could talk about with my friends from school because they don't understand what how the medic medication side effects, medication side effects give me headaches or make it hard for me to focus at school or give me hand tremors. And so it was just good to be able to have an open dialogue to, with someone my age and just be like, yeah, this sucks, but we're going to keep on keeping on. And it was an amazing thing. And it was a normal camp. I remember going into camp thinking it was going to be like a hospital. I wasn't going to be able to do anything. I was going to be like constantly watched, but it was amazing. Though we had, there was a pool we'd go to for two hours every day. There's a lake we spent some time by, a small beach. There was zip lining, which I did not do. Not a friend of heights, but it was great to have the option. Rock climbing, uh, crafts at times. There was like movie nights. The food was pretty good pretty good for camp food. I mean, it was pretty good. And and it was just really a good time for the most part. And, and it just taught me a lot because I had no idea what I was walking into. And it just kind of like normalized it for me, like normalized it because there was like at a certain point every day, Everyone would go take their meds and then would go back to jamming in the lounge area or go to the pool or go get food. And it was like a totally normal thing. It was everyone would go get their meds and they would go eat or they would go do this and this. And it was it was just really amazing thing that the Booksy Foundation had done for us to have this camp. It, it totally changed my life because 
I don't know where I would be if it if I hadn't had that camp, if I hadn't found that community. Even though the community was short-lived, they were not lifetime friends. But I know, I've learned now that they were in my life for the time that they were meant to. They taught me what I needed to know and we moved on with our lives and I wish them well. And I'm just thankful that I had the chance to know them when I did. Things got really hard for me in my freshman year of high, of high school because it was a whole new school. It was, I had to get a 504, which if you're not familiar with, is basically like an action plan. Like if a seizure would occur into the classroom, what should teachers do? Who should be called? Blah, blah, X and X and Y and all of that. And, and just so school knows how the medications affect me, what kind of extra help I needed. And... It was weird things. It was just a weird thing. And I was in this new environment and I just moved and I became very severely depressed. I went through my freshman year of high school and I don't think I was there consecutively ever. I missed one or two days out of every week, I want to say. And It was because I was so severely depressed to a point where I would get agoraphobic because I couldn't go outside. I couldn't imagine a world outside of my bed because I was so terrified. I think I was so overwhelmed. I kind of went into this numb phase because I couldn't deal with anything. I couldn't deal with the things that were happening in my life. And it was a very tough time. But... Through the help of my family and and just time of realizing that I am lucky to be alive. Honestly, people who have epilepsy rarely find medications that control their seizures. And people who have epilepsy die. They just don't wake up from seizures. Sometimes that's the scary truth. And I just realized that I was so lucky to be alive and I needed to live each day like that because as scary as the world seemed, I needed to take all the chances I had and I needed to go for it because anything can happen. And I don't want to, I don't want to regret anything. And I always had faith in a higher power. And honestly, when I first got sick, there was a lot of anger and confusion and I lost that for some time. And looking back, I know it was God that got me as far as I did. And it was him who who got me through that because I always, I kept praying. Every at night I would still pray and I would just ask God to keep me and watch me. And even though Sometimes I didn't know what I was saying and sometimes I didn't want to or whatever. And it wasn't always, it, but there was times when I did pray and I always had that faith in him. And and now that I look back almost six years seizure free and I've been off medication for two years, I am just so grateful. And I'm having a chance to really explore religion and explore God and really know all about my father who is wonderful and brought me to where I am today. I'm just so grateful. I also found out an outlet and that's very important. I think when you have stuff like this to find something that you can just give your all into. For me, it was theater and singing and I found a theater home And I made some amazing friends that I am lucky to now call family. And I got a chance to really just put my all on the stage. And it's just an amazing thing when you, I spent six weeks working on a show and I put it up and I got to do it several times. And, and it gave me the chance to really just explore myself and, It gave me a lot of confidence because you got to have a lot of confidence to step out in front of that stage and just give everything you have to the people in the audience. 
and it was a really it was really tough at first because I had never acted before until my high school drama teacher took a chance on me and put me in the school musical and then there's just a moment when you step out on stage and and it's a moment that I live for I really I really I live for it and I got the chance to explore that in another theater in my community and it was just a really amazing thing for me and and I left for college a couple of oh five by August September November September October November like four months ago there you go like four months ago and I and that was a new experience for me because I had never been completely on my own because of having epilepsy. Honestly, the last few years of my life have been kind of sheltered. I don't know if it was more to calm my own anxieties or my parents' anxieties, but I always was with someone a lot. It wasn't until the last year or so that I got more independent, but even saying that, I was always I was out with friends or out with people that I knew and I trusted, and this was the first time. Now I'm alone a lot in my apartment when I go to school and it's a new world and it's a lot of putting faith in God and just knowing my body like knowing I need to get enough sleep I need to be hydrated I need to stay healthy just simple stuff and and I'll be fine but there's always struggles no matter how far or how long that you get I recently had a bit of a setback because of my insurance changing and my medicine didn't come through. And for a few days, I didn't have the enough of medication that I needed. And I'm medication I'm talking about is a a uh, migraine medication, but it is also a anti-convulsant, which is what people with epilepsy take. But I do not take it at a seizure dosage. But there's still always that anxiety. If I don't get the full dosage, I question, is that what is stopping the seizures? And what happens if I don't take it? And so it was a few really rough days there. And it just reminds me that even though I'm coming up on six years, it's I can't get sloppy. Really, that's a message I want to say you just can't get sloppy you got to care for yourself and you got to watch out for everything got to watch out for everything and i just want to i just want my my two big things by making this video is one to tell everyone out there whether it's whatever it's you struggle with or whatever has been put into your life that you didn't choose whether it's a condition or I don't know whether it's a condition or something. Just don't be ashamed of it. Be proud of yourself for getting through it or working through it or wherever you are in it. Just be proud of yourself. Because you are strong enough to win this fight. Whether it's day 1, day 10, or day 101, you are strong enough to win this fight. You just have to keep on keeping on. And as hard as it seems, you will get there. You will get there. And I didn't always know that when I was lying in my bed missing consecutive days of school because I didn't feel like I wanted to be alive if this is what my life was. I didn't think I would make it. I didn't think I would graduate high school. I didn't think I would make it to college. But I'm here and I have a whole future ahead of me. And I thank God and my family and medicine every day for that because I am so blessed to be alive and I will never take that for granted. And I also just want to do a big shout out to that Blubs Foundation of Greater Chicago for Camp Blackhawk and for the support of the people there because it was it's a big help in also making me, also helping me get to this point. And so if you or someone you love has epilepsy and you live in the greater, uh, greater Chicago area, I would look into the Epilepsy Foundation. Maybe you're too old to go to camp, but they have all kinds of resources. They have art therapy, counseling. 
just seek them out. And if you don't live in the greater Chicago area, Illinois, there are epilepsy foundations everywhere. And there is also the Epilepsy Foundation of America, where you can find resources for yourself. Um, to my fellow epileptic, epileptics, don't be afraid to seek out help. Don't be afraid to tell your friends because if they love you and if they are the right friends, they will be there for you. And it won't change how they see you. And yes, you will run into people who it will change how they see you, but they aren't worth it then. Because you are worth it. You are worth everything. So never stop fighting. Thank you. I, um, I hope you all had a great day. I hope you all liked that video. And I hope to have more videos and I just want, and I want to actually do another video with epilepsy first aid and just frequently asked questions. So if there's any questions you have, please leave it in the comment section below, as well as hit that like button and that subscribe, subscribe button. And I'm always Avalon.